So it is described that when Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was just a very small child, just coming out of his age as a baby, he was the source of all happiness and bliss for all the residents of Navadweep Dham. Now he was living in the um, home of his father and mother, Jagannath Mishra and Shachi Mata. And being very, very religious and spiritually minded Brahmins, they were always very much anxious to serve the saintly persons. So one day a Brahmin from abroad came to their house. And they were thinking that this is our greatest fortune, that he has come as a beggar, not to beg from us for his sense gratification, but to beg us to engage in the service of the Lord. We should understand that the real sadhus, their begging is not for their own purpose. Their begging is an act of mercy and compassion upon the common beings of this world. And those who are truly religious in mind, they welcome such beggars as the greatest fortune of their life. This Brahman, he was very, very saintly. He was constantly chanting the holy name of Lord Krishna. He worshipped Krishna in the form of Gopal. And he had a beautiful murti of Gopal hanging from his neck along with Shalagram Shila. And he would worship them in everything he did. It is described that tears were constantly decorating his eyes in love for the Lord of his life, Sri Gopal. So when Jagannath Mishra saw the saintly qualities in this person's demeanor, he was very happy. He offered the Brahmin a nice seat. He washed his feet. He offered him prayers of humility and devotion. He said, my dear sir, whatever I have in my home is yours. Please accept my humble offering. It is only out of great mercy that you leave the dust from your feet in poor-hearted poor -hearted householders abodes like myself. Notice Jagannath Mishra, who was most learned, who was most pious, he was not thinking himself in any situation but the most humble condition of life. Some people who are very much perverted by the age of Kali Yuga. They think, what are these saintly persons? Why don't they get a job and do something constructive in this world? Huh? Why don't they become businessmen or doctors or lawyers, professional people, and do something tangible? What is this brahmachari, sannyasis? This is all just laziness and uselessness. Do something for society. Be constructive. If you want to preach, you have to show people that you are a constructive part of society. Otherwise, who's going to listen to you? You're just useless people, parasites. This is the way ignorant people think. But great souls like Jagannath Mishra, he understood that such, such sadhus, they take to the profession of begging as an austerity, a severe austerity, they could easily be enjoying life like us, working hard for sense enjoyment, having nice children, having nice families like this. But they are renouncing all these things to take to the occupation of a beggar only to give mercy, only to give God's grace to the world. Therefore, we are the parasites. Only the saintly persons are not parasites. Why? Because we're constantly sucking God for our own sense gratification. Right? That is a parasite. God is the controller and owner of everything. And the Grihamedes, 
the materialistic householders, they are constantly sucking God's energy, thinking, give me this, give me this, give me this, this is mine, this is mine, I want more. But a person who gives up this conception and is willing to live a simple life for the benefit of others, he is not a parasite. His whole life is simply giving. So Jagannath Mishra was teaching us what real Grihastha life means to have this respect and honor for those who have taken to the renounced order of life with a genuine spirit of devotion. And of course, as the culture of India to this day is still very strong, people in the Grihastha ashram like to feed their guests. So Jagannath Mishra was thinking, my greatest fortune is if I can give you some nice prasad. So he said, we will make all arrangements. The Brahmin, he ex Jagannath Mishra even considered himself too lowly to cook for this Brahmin. He said, we will, give, we will bring all the ingredients and everything, and we will cook for you if you like, but we, we are already fallen. If you want to cook yourself and offer it to Gopal, we will just provide all the facilities. So the Brahmin began to cook. And as he was cooking, he was simply thinking how to make every preparation just so nice and tasteful for Gopal to enjoy. He was not thinking, ah, today I will eat a big feast. He was thinking, today, such a great benediction I get to cook for Gopal. Usually I'm living in the forest. Usually I'm just eating roots and fruits. But today I get to cook nice rice for my, for my lord, Takoraji.